whole journey to Jerusalem. After saying farewell to the Ephesian elders, we sailed straight to the island of Kos. The next day we reached Rhodes and then went to Patara. There we boarded a ship sailing for Phoenicia. We sighted the island of Cyprus, passed it on your left. <clears throat> Excuse me. Passed it on your left and landed at the harbour of Tyre in Syria, where the ship was to unload its cargo. We went ashore, found the local believers, and oh, I know, it's okay, it gets better, and stayed with them a week. These believers prophesied through the Holy Spirit that Paul should not go to Jerusalem. When we returned to the ship at the end of the week, the entire congregation, including women and children, left the city and came down to the shore with us. There we knelt, prayed, and said our farewells. Then we went aboard and they returned home. The next stop after leaving Tyre was... Ptolemais, where we greeted the brothers and sisters and stayed for one day. The next day we went on to Caesarea and stayed at the home of Philip the Evangelist, one of the seven men who had been chosen to do to distribute food. He had four unmarried daughters who had the gift of prophecy. <laughs> Several days later, a man named Agabus, who also had the gift of prophecy, arrived from Judea. I think my dog Blueberry just loves this story. He came over, took Paul's belt and bound his own feet and hands with it. Then he said, oh, <clears throat> let me rewind a little bit. I'm going to go back to 10. Several days later, a man named Agabus, who also had the gift of prophecy, arrived from Judea. He came over, took Paul's belt, and bound his own feet and hands with it. Then he said, The Holy Spirit declares, So shall the owner of this belt be bound by the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem and turned over <coughs> to the Gentiles. When we heard this, we and the local believers all begged Paul not to go to Jerusalem. But he said, Why all this weeping? You are breaking my heart. I am ready not only to be jailed at Jerusalem, but even to die for the sake of the Lord Jesus. When it was clear that we couldn't persuade him, we gave up and said, The Lord's will be done. <clears throat> Paul arrives at Jerusalem. After this, we packed our things and left for Jerusalem. Some believers from Caesarea accompanied us, and they took us to the home of Nisan, a man originally from Cyprus and one of the elder, one of the early believers. When we arrived, the brothers and sisters in Jerusalem welcomed us warmly. The next day, Paul went with us to meet with James, and all the elders of the Jerusalem church were present. After greeting them, Paul gave a detailed account of the things God had accomplished among the Gentiles through his ministry. After hearing this, they praised God. And then they said, You know, dear brother, how many thousands of Jews have also believed? And they all follow the law of Moses very seriously. But the Jewish believers here in Jerusalem have been told that you are teaching all the Jews who live among the Gentiles to turn their backs on the laws of Moses. They've heard that you teach them not to circumcise their children or follow other Jewish customs. What should we do? They will certainly hear that you have come. Here's what we want you to do. We have four men here who have completed their vow. Go with them to the temple and join them in the purification ceremony, paying for them to have their heads ritually shaved. Then everyone will know that the rumors are all false and that you yourself observe the Jewish laws. As for the Gentile believers, they should do what we already told them in a letter. They should abstain from eating certain... It's from eating food offered to idols from consuming blood or meat of strangled animals and from sexual immorality. 
Paul is arrested. <clears throat> so Paul went to the temple the next day with the other men. They had already started the purification ritual, so he publicly announced the date when their vows would end and sacrifices would be offered for each of them. The seven days were almost ended when some Jews from the province of Asia saw Paul in the temple and roused a mob against him. They grabbed him, yelling, Men of Israel, help us! This is the man who preaches against all people everywhere and tells everybody to disobey the Jewish laws. He speaks against the temple and even defiles this holy place by bringing in Gentiles. For earlier that day they had seen him in the city with Trophimus, a Gentile from Ephesus, and they assumed Paul had taken him into the temple. The whole city was rocked by these accusations, and a great riot followed. Paul was grabbed and dragged out of the temple, and immediately the gates were closed behind him. As they were trying to kill him, word reached the commander of the Rome regiment that all Jerusalem was in an uproar. He immediately called out his soldiers. <laughs> Excuse me, let me get back into character. I'm... My dog is distracting me, to be quite honest. <laughs> See, I'm not laughing at the story. Mm. Do you ever do that? <laughs> As they were trying to kill him, word reached the commander of the Roman regiment that all Jerusalem was in an uproar. He immediately called out his soldiers and officers and ran down among the crowd. When the mob saw the commander and the troops coming, they stopped beating Paul. Then the commander arrested him and ordered him bound with two chains. He asked the crowd who he was and what he had done. Some shouted one thing and some another. Since he couldn't find out the truth in all the uproar and confusion, he ordered that Paul be taken to the fortress. As Paul reached the stairs, the mob grew so violent the soldiers had to lift him to the to their shoulders to protect him. And the crowd followed behind shouting, kill him, kill him. Paul speaks to the crowd. As Paul was about to be taken inside, he said to the commander, May I have a word with you? Do you know Greek? The commander asked, surprised. Aren't you the Egyptian who led a rebellion some time ago and 4,000 members of the assassins out into the desert? No, Paul replied. I am a Jew and a citizen of Tarsus in Cilicia, which is an important city. Please let me talk to these people. The commander agreed, so Paul stood on the stairs and motioned to the people to be quiet. Soon, a deep silence enveloped the crowd, and he addressed them in their own language, Aramaic.